Hi there, and welcome back to the flipped classroom. Our topic is today is direct and inverse variation. So let's start off with direct variation. And what exactly does that mean? Well, there is a direct relationship between x and y. And what we mean by direct relationship is that if x increases, then y increases as well. All right, so let's make sure we get those carefully written in our notebooks. Now, there's going to be a formula that we memorize to go along with this, and that formula is y equals kx. All right, so box that in, star that. That is our formula for direct variation, y equals kx. Now, this k value is called the constant of proportionality. Uh, why they don't use the C, I don't know, but we go with a K. It is the constant of proportionality. And I would read this as Y varies directly as X. Okay, so notice I said Y varies directly, and I'm starting with Y. Varies directly is going to be my equals K, or is proportional to X. And it's very important that our letters line up the same. Whatever letter they start with is what your formula start with, starts with, and what we end up with is what your formula ends in. All right, so let's dive into our first problem. Now, these are all small little word problems. So M varies directly as P, and I want you to stop right there. M varies directly as P. Our keyword is varies directly. So that triggers in my head, I'm going to set up the formula y equals kx. Now, notice I don't have a y or an x in this problem. The letters they tell me to use are m and p. So I'm going to rewrite my direct proportion equation here in terms of m and p. So because they start with m, I'm going to start with m. m equals k, so that's my is proportional, to the letter p. So it's very important that we put our direct variation formula in terms of the variables in the problem. Now, um, again, off to the side, let's make a, a little note to ourselves. The first thing we want to do is find k, that constant of proportionality. So very simple. I'm just going to plug in the numbers they give me. They say if m equals 75, so in place of m, I'm putting 75, and p equals 10, so I'm going to replace my P with a 10. My goal is to solve for K. And I'm simply going to divide over the 10, and I get K equals 7.5. Now I'm not done with the formula, um, or the problem, I'm sorry. My goal is eventually to find M, but I'm first going to find K. Now that I know what that K value is, I'm just going to substitute it into my formula. So I'm going to say M equals... 7.5p. And again, I just solved for k and substituted that in place of my k. Now I can actually solve the problem. Uh, let me just scroll back. They said find m, so oopsie, find m when p is 16. So the key is, is that p is 16. And I'm just going to substitute that 16 into my letter p. So m equals 7.5 times 16, uh, grab your calculator, and I believe m should equal 120. And that's it. It was that simple. Um, so our goal for direct variation is to memorize that formula, y equals kx, put it in terms of the variables in terms of the problem, solve for k, and then answer the question. Okay, let's try another word problem here. Brett's wages vary directly as the number of hours he works. I'm going to stop there. I saw my key trigger word varies directly. Now you'll notice they don't tell me letters in this problem. Y varies directly as X. So the first thing I am going to do is just start with Y equals KX because I saw varies directly. And now I'm going to put my own letters into the problem. What varies directly is what? Well, it says his wages, so I'm going to use W, vary directly, so that's my constant. And what do they vary directly as? Well, as the number of hours. So I'm just going to use H for hours. So again, because see they said wages first, I'm using W first. Varies directly, tells me to go with that K there. And I'm varying with my hours, so I'm start ending with H. 
Now, again, remember we're going to solve for k first. All right, solve for k. Now we'll just plug in what we know. Uh, his wages for five hours, so there's the hours, are $29.75. There's my wages. So $29.75, whoops, $29.75 equals K times 5. And I'm just going to divide that over, solve for K, and doo -doo -doo, I believe K equals $5.95. All right, so my first step was to solve for k. Now I'm not done. I'm going to take this k value, and I'm going to put it back in my equation with w in it. So I'll just scroll up here. I've got w equals 595h. Now I just need to answer the question. The actual question said, how much will he earn? So I'm finding my wages. Um, if he works for 30 hours. So I'm just going to plug 30 into my hours. And, oops, I believe I get an answer of $178.50. Alright, so hopefully not too bad. So goal number one, identify the direct variation, y equals kx, put the problem into its own variables, so for example, my wages and height, substitute what you, know, what you know to find k, and then actually answer the question. Um, the next question is an old exam question, and it says which of the following does not show an example of direct variation? So remember, my formula is y equals kx. And I'm just going to take the first ordered pair I see and plug it in and see what happens. 4 equals k times 1. Divide over my 1. I get k equals 4. All right, well, if it's a direct relationship, the same thing should occur if I try the next ordered pair. So let's try 2 8. Well, if y equals kx... So let's see, 8 equals k times 2, divide out my 2, k equals 4. And if I try it again, hopefully you'll notice the pattern, k should equal 4 every time. And, you know, maybe another quicker way to see it is 1 times my constant is 4, 2 times my constant 4 is 8, 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16. So I would definitely say this is a direct variation. Let's try the next example. Um, in this option, if I say y equals kx, see that's 24 equals k times 2, divide out my k, k equals 12. Now if this is direct, the next ordered pair should do the same thing. y equals kx, 12 equals k times 4, divide by 4, k equals 3. I did not get the same constant. And again, constant would mean it has to be the same thing. So this is an example that is not direct variation. Now I want to do one more thing with that example that was direct variation that we just talked about. And I actually want to graph it out. Uh, so if I go 1, 2, 3, 4 and plot that point, 2, 8, plot that point, 312. And I don't think I'm going to squeeze the last one in there, but I think you'll start to notice that I make a straight, oops, make that point a little bigger. I make a straight line. And that's another quality of direct variation, is that I should be making a straight line. And you'll notice that I have a constant slope of up 4 over 1. Up 4 over 1. Okay, so another property of direct variation is that I should be linear. Okay, our second topic is inverse variation. And this time you'll notice if the x value increases, then the y value decreases. Let's make an important notice 
that the two functions are opposite. Let me give you another example. If one value is multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, then the second value is going to be divided by 2. Again, in inverse variation, we should be doing the opposite idea. Alright, so since inverse is different from direct, it also has a different formula. So the formula we want in our notebook that we're going to memorize is y equals k divided by x. Alright, this is our inverse variation formula. So direct was y equals k times x, inverse is y equals k divided by x. And k is still that constant of proportionality. Alright, now I know they're a little wordy, but you're just looking for the key words here. So it says, in kickboxing, it is found that the force needed to break a board varies inversely with the length of the board. So I'm stopping right there. There is my key word, varies inversely. Alright, so I am jotting down my varies inversely formula. Y equals K divided by X this time. Now again, you'll notice there aren't y's or x's in the problem, so I'm going to turn it into my own variables. What varies inversely with what? So I'm going to read it again. It is found that the force needed to break a board varies inversely with the length. So those are two variables I'm going to use. F for force, and it came first, so I'm writing it first. Varies inversely with the length. Okay, so again, just like direct variation, start with your formula, put it in terms of your own words there. Same goal, we're going to solve for K first. If it takes 5 pounds of pressure to break a board 2 feet long. So 5 pounds of pressure is my force. 2 feet long is my length. And this time I'm just going to put this over 1 and cross multiply to solve for K. Uh, so I'm going to get K equals 10. Now that I have that value k equals 10, I'm going to rewrite my equation. Force equals, whoops, not k anymore, 10 over L. And I'm just going to continue and plug that last piece of information in. How many pounds, so what is your force, will it take to break a board that is 6 feet long? That's your length. So F equals 10 divided by 6. And there we have it. Not a pretty number, but we've got an answer for force, 10 divided by 6. And since force is in pounds, I'm just going to say 10 over 6 pounds. When air is pumped into a tire, the pr pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. Okay, so again, looking for that key trigger word. So they may not actually say um, varies inversely, they might use inversely proportional. But the same idea, you're looking for that word either direct or inverse in there. Um, so I'm going to stop there and say y equals k over x. And again, I'm just going to switch these letters um, to describe my problem. So what is inversely proportional to what? When air is pumped into tire, the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. So I'm going to switch this to p equals k over v. Um, my goal is to solve for K first, so if the pressure is 35, so there's my P. When the volume is 120, so divided by 120. And I'm just going to cross multiply and solve for K. Uh, I get K equals 4,200. Now remember, you're not done, you just found the constant. So I'm going to go back and plug that in for my K. P equals 4200 over V. Uh, what is the pressure in pounds, so I'm finding the P, when the volume is 140 cubic inches? So I'm just going to replace my volume with 140. And I get... 30 pounds. Um, so hopefully you're thinking these aren't too bad. And I just got one or two more for you. So I want to take a look at what a graph of inverse proportionality is going to look like. So I'm going to start with my formula y equals kx. And I'm just going to make up any constant for k. Mm, 
let's say 10. So y equals 10 over k. I'm sorry, y equals 10 over x. And now, I simply just want to graph this function. Alright, so I'm going to start with 0. If I make a little table here and I say, okay, x is 0, well, I'm going to get 10 divided by 0, which of course does not exist. I'm not allowed to divide by 0. I'm going to try a 1. 10 divided by 1 is 10. So I'm going to plot that point. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to try a 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So I'm going to plot that point. Um, I could do 3, 4. Those aren't really nice numbers. The next nice number, of course, is 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And probably the last nice number I'm going to use is 10 itself. 10 divided by 10 is 1. You'll notice this graph of inverse variation is not going to make a straight line. It's going to make a nice smooth curve. And it's not touching that x or y axis there. And you'll notice the higher the y value is, the lower the x value is. And the higher the x value is, the lower the y value is. And remember, that's how it should work. They're inversely proportional. They're doing opposites. If x is big, y is small. If x is small, y is big. So this should be an example in your notebook of inverse variation. All right, well, we've made it to our last example. And I did try to throw a little hiccup at you. It says t varies directly as the square of m. So again, I'm stopping there for my key trigger word varies directly, and that's going to bring me back to y equals k times x this time. Now, again, read real carefully. We're not using x and y, we're using t and m. And I threw one more little hiccup at you. It says t varies directly as the square of m. Alright, watch those words carefully. So I'm going to start with t varies directly, and it's not just plain old m, it says the square of m. So make sure you have t equals k m squared. If you catch that, the rest is pretty straightforward. You're going to find k, so plug in what you know. t is 8, and m is 2. Remember, that's 2 squared now. Uh, so I'm going to get 8 equals k times 4. Therefore, k equals 2. Go back and plug that k into your equation. t equals 2m squared. Find t when m is 4. So I'm just going to replace my m with a 4. And remember that is m squared. So I get 2 times 4 squared is 16. t equals 32. Well, hopefully, you've got the difference now between direct and inverse variation. So let me just recap for you. Direct variation is y equals k times x, and inverse variation is y equals k divided by x. Direct variation, we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to make a nice straight line. Inverse variation, we're going to do opposite things, and we're going to make this smooth curve. Have a great night, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.